Singer. Um, in terms of uh, this content, I saw some web links up there. I just wanted to give you guys this. So Cisco, uh, Cisco.com slash go slash UCS, right? So if you guys do Cisco.com slash go slash UCS, it'll bring you to the landing page for pretty much everything I'm going to talk about today. So I, I, you know, we get into kind of what UCS is and all this other stuff, and I kind of like at the very beginning just to spend a couple minutes just kind of level setting that we're talking about servers. <laughs> so we uh, we went at it a little differently than everybody else did. We've been we've been selling our server infrastructure for about uh, four years, and I've got some slides that are going to go through this, but I wanted to start on the web and kind of tell you from a self-service perspective kind of where you would get stuff. Um, so it's cisco.com slash go slash UCS, and that will drive you to this page. Um, there's a white paper up there called UCS Agility. It was written at the end of last year, about seven or eight pages of content that kind of walks through everything that UCS is, what it does, what the value is, and a lot of what we're going to cover today is going to ultimately be coming from uh, this uh, this white paper from a value, so all, the, all the different things we talked about come back to that. Uh, if you're a little bit more technical, show of hands here, anybody here that's actually from a server perspective, like hands-on server people? This is where we skip the really technical content, right? Um, UCS, uh, the, the Unified Computer is what it stands for, UCS uh, video library, we took all these things that you would want to do in UCS and we recorded a lot of five to ten minute video on demand vignettes to walk you through all sorts of things you would want to do to set up and administer a UCS environment. We put that out there, right? Just do UCS Advantage and the video series will come up. Another thing that we like to talk a lot about at Cisco is reference architectures, right? So the data center is a reference architecture for Cisco. So we have several areas that we ultimately put a lot of investment in around reference architecture. The data center is a reference architecture. So the, the, this all bubbles up into this paradigm called the Cisco Virtualized Multi-Service Data Center. And there is a lot of content in here on how you ultimately design an architect of data center. Any data center architect, a lot of route switch, but data center architecture would ultimately flow through here. UCS, in its essence is a building block for the data center. This makes it really easy to build the data center of the future, right? And that's all reference. It also includes all of our partner ecosystem stuff with people like EMC and NetApp. If you ever heard anything about a B block or a flex pod, how you put together an end-to-end -end architecture, all the information on how you do that is ultimately published up here. And then coming over one step further, we took the depths of how you get into UCS. If you ever looked at a quote for Cisco here, there were lots, lots of line items. What is this? What is that? Bundles, right? So everything that we're going to talk about from a UCS perspective kind of comes back to some pretty simple bundles. So if you haven't looked at UCS and you kind of want to know where you would start, uh, it's called buildprice.cisco.com. And the smart play is our bundle. Most of the customers are buying into our Blade architecture, which is where we spend most of our time talking about. But uh, we do have a pretty robust rack server portfolio as well. It's all part of that UCS infrastructure. Okay, so that's kind of some basic uh, background in terms of what's out there on the web. And I think that was about it on the web. And then I just had a few slides, and I wanted to be cognizant of time. And I'll introduce my colleague that's here with me. So, uh, so I'm the Northern California data center person. I'm not Drew Brees, Drew Iacone, but I won't be out there trying to beat the 49 this weekend. With me is my technical counterpart, Cisco, you know, pre-sale technical, pre-sale super technical, Sid Tomas. Sid, introduce yourself. Sure. Hey, so uh, good afternoon, guys. Uh, I'm a consulting systems engineer focused around our data center technologies. Um, I've been with Cisco for about uh, six years. Uh, prior to that, I came from the customer side. Actually, I was a, I was a solutions architect for for, for managing a data center uh, for multiple companies. So I have about well, 11, 12 years of data center management team. I came from Ingen Corporation back when they were like uh, the founders of Crawl Technology, and then actually for the So I have a lot of uh, background. 
And then Mark. Hey guys, I'm Mark Edwards. Uh, I was a customer for a long time, for about 10 years. Uh, just recently joined Cisco about eight months ago. I uh, worked primarily in data center environments. Uh, through my work, I was able to achieve a CCIE and route switch. So I also work in core networks as well. But definitely pretty chain to what goes on in the data center. And I'd be happy to field any questions. Uh, we, uh, you know, Cisco, it gets complicated quick sometimes, doesn't need to, but we have a lot of super technical questions that come at us. Uh, these guys can handle the questions. I kind of run out of my depth. Like, there's like level one, then there's level two, then there's like level three, and I'm kind of like level two. And these guys are my level three backup. So I think this should work. Um, so if you go into that US, that UCS agility white paper that I got, showed you guys, or you look at, if you pulled out anything, on the UCS infrastructure, you'll see this at a glance sheet, which is why I use it, because it's a good lead behind, right? You can get to this from the web. It's not a custom PDF that I built, okay? All I did was snip this out of that document. So if you think about it, again, UCS stands for Unified Computing System, okay? So when you think about it, I like to do it from the bottom up. So everybody here has heard of Intel? Xeon chipsets, all right, they've got motherboards. You get the motherboard from Intel. Okay, there's a two socket motherboard and a four socket motherboard. So we get them from Intel. So when Intel comes out with a new motherboard, we put it into UCS. Big difference is that this is just like a line card in a, in a chassis for us. It's a stateless line card, like just like a router or a switch from Cisco where you put a card in it. These, are, these motherboards are like that. Okay, that's just going to add, that's going to add processing power, that's going to add memory, and it's all done stateless. So we have Blade and rack servers. Again, whatever Intel shipping on the Xeon roadmap, we're going to deliver. If you go up the blade side, we put the blade into obviously a chassis, right? And then that chassis has some connections, that 10 gig, up to some controllers. Now the controllers, guys, are full fabric Cisco switches. They're either 48 port switches or they're 96 port switches. And these switches sit essentially end of row, right? They're not, they're not in the architecture, they're connected at the end of row, which means that if you need to add more blades, you need to add another chassis, you don't have to put them in there with the management. You build this once, and then it scales as you need to scale it. So we've got a lot of customers that start out with one chassis, a couple of blades, and they may never ever get to a second or a third chassis. But if they do, it's just as simple as plugging it in, and Cisco UCS is all stateless computing, right? What that means is that when you plug in a blade or you plug in a chassis, we discover it and we inventory it and we allow you to turn it on, turn it off, manage it, provision it, put it on the network. And because it's a full fabric switch, when we talk about putting it on the network, we're talking about a very specific location on the network with very specific configuration settings. So this is the big difference with everybody else that was looking at it from a server perspective. Cisco was looking at it from what we call a collapsed access perspective. We were collapsing the data center switching platform and the compute platform into one platform. That's what UCS is. Now, if you want to move out of the blades and over into rack servers, there wasn't a lot of server experts here, but probably 80% of what you can do can fit on a blade. There's about 20 to 30% of the stuff out there that's not really designed to run on a blade. So what we didn't want to do was force you to have one management paradigm for blades and then a completely separate management paradigm for rack servers given that 20 to 30% of your stuff may or may not be on a blade. So in our world, you can move back and forth between blade and rack servers depending on your particular needs without having to change your management paradigm. So I talk about it from a really simple perspective, Intel, right? So we're all basically Intel OEMs here. So HP does it, Dell does it, Cisco does it. But we did it, and every time we did it, we kept on winning all the world record benchmarks, right? A couple little things that we were doing different in there is that we didn't take the card that everybody else used to connect to the network. We built our own card, right? There's called a combination network adapter. That card was a little bit faster getting things in and out of the computer than everybody else's. So anything that had an I.O. problem, we did really well in the benchmark. Memory. Some applications need lots and lots of memory. Okay, well, we can put twice as much memory in our UCS servers. So anything that was memory intensive, we were winning the benchmark. Anything that was I.O. intensive, we were winning the benchmark. Okay? So we ended up getting all the benchmarks in a world of equal. 
because everybody else had the exact same numbers. And we kept on coming out on top. It's a four-year story. All the different types of workloads, not just one or two across the board. You think about it from a portfolio perspective, you know, unified computing is one of three pillars in Cisco's data center strategy. Unified fabric, right, this is where we took Ethernet and fiber channel and management switching networks and we converted that all into one platform called our Nexus portfolio. Unified compute, which is what I just talked about and I'll talk about a little bit more, and then unified management. So this is going to get us from anywhere from 1 gig to 40 gig and up to 100 gig now, right? That's where this is going. Collapsing the access layer, collapsing the core, okay? This is our Nexus portfolio. UCS, that's that whole concept of modular stateless hardware, right? And allowing you to connect that down to the VM and get really good performance. Then unified management. I always ask if you've ever tried to run a data center, how many different tool sets you've either looked at and thrown away and built your own or bought and not used? Like there's literally hundreds of, of tools that you ultimately get that come with your stuff. With Cisco and our data center strategy in the management pillar, our goal is to give you one tool set that you will not throw away for compute, one for orchestration, and then one for hybrid cloud. Everybody we talk to is somehow trying to figure out a way to leverage cloud resources, either getting software from the cloud like Salesforce, Workday, right, or getting uh, infrastructure from places like Amazon and being able to do that and move things back and forth, right, that's hybrid cloud. So when you get into the question, you know, how many tools or how many tool sets or GUIs do you want to have to learn and manage to run your data center? Most people say less than, you know, less than 10, more than one, you know, I, the right tool for the job. I don't want to use a hammer every time. I want to have the right tool. But don't give me 30. Give me like two or three, okay? Less is more. If they're good, less is more. And that's our strategy. <coughs> if you want a lot of locking, right, there's a lot of little tricks in the data center to get you to use certain tool sets that only work and you build a lot of practices and procedures and processes around it, but it's locked into a certain technology. We're trying to help you avoid lock-in, specifically at the hypervisor level. So just the backstory. Again, this started, and as everybody has been in the data center or witnessed this firsthand, right? This is what the data center is looking for the customer. Right? So Cisco, it was like 2006 when we, uh, a bunch of executives at Cisco, uh, the ones that ironically brought the Catalyst product to Cisco left with their own money and started a company down the road from Cisco called Duova Systems. And they did it because they were thinking about getting into the compute business. And they did it because they were looking at servers that had 10 wires that were coming out of it, and only two of them were for power. Okay? They had 10 wires coming out, and they were going into all these discrete networks. This is one gig infrastructure, management networks, Ethernet networks, fiber channel networks, lots of cards, lots of peripherals, lots of wires. Right? Lots of problems, lots of costs, lots of complexity, right? That's what these guys are looking to solve, and that's what ultimately UCS is trying to deliver. <laughs> so you, as you progress through the data centers that we've gone into over the last four years, you would see this pattern, right, where it was extremely complicated, and we tried to make it extremely simple. If you ever walked down one of these aisles, this one's kind of a joke picture, and you accidentally knocked out one of your cables, you cannot find the problem. This one's actually pretty tight, but you could walk down that, if you had a little crash cart, you knock one of these wires out, you're done. Okay, so this is the concept. Plus, if you think about advanced lights out management, meaning I'm not planning to go to the data center, it can't be that complicated that they're going to be sending somebody in there on your behalf. Okay, so that's the other end of this equation. I don't want to have anybody knock out the wires and I don't want to go there myself. Okay, so the progression over the last four years as we entered the market with UCS, again, modular stateless Intel servers, was you were either buying ridiculously unconverged racked of servers, right, that had hundreds of management points, right, lots of little issues and lots of costs, lots of tools, or you bought into what we kind of call the semi-converged, the initial blade architectures that were out there, right, so HP was kind of first to market, they had 60, 70% of the market share at one point, and then Dell and IBM kind of came in behind and were chipping away at that market share before we could get into the game, and that's HP, okay, but there were lots of management points within the chassis, the chassis itself was a management point, and there were lots of wires coming out of there because there's lots of different switches in there. And you look at that over there on the other end, that's Converge, that's Cisco, right? That's a pair of UCS chassis wired up with, uh, in this picture right here, this is a 40 gig port channel left and a 40 gig port channel right, okay? That's a pretty clean picture. 
no management points, and again, I can do this on Blade or Rack servers. So if you think about it from a value perspective where everybody's trying to go, you know, from semi-converge, there are less management points in two private clouds than there are in two chassis of anybody else's stuff. And if you think about it from time, right, how much time does it take to administer all this infrastructure? If you have lots of little tiny management points, you don't really ever get to the finish line. You need lots of tools, lots of people, right? If you think about where everybody's trying to go, the hybrid cloud, does it really get you there to have that many management points in that architecture? It doesn't. So that's why customers have been adopting Cisco, because virtualization had taken hold about five years ago, but nobody really had a platform that was designed for it. Because virtualization is just a pit stop. That's why they have the West and the Midwest, right? They thought the Midwest was the West, and it turns out that wasn't the West, that was just the Midwest, right? The West was on the other side of those mountains, you know, and that's where hybrid cloud is, right? So UCS is a prerequisite piece in a lot of customers' minds to help you get to the finish line with this hybrid cloud, all right? So just in terms of the value statements that you could ultimately put against the UCS discussion, data center consolidation, lots of wires, lots of switches, lots of networks, lots of cards, lots less. Okay, lots of studies that point to that's 50 to 70 percent less expensive. Tech refresh into UCS, sweep the floors, data center consolidation. Lots of customers say, listen, I turn this UCS thing on, and I don't have to admin anything anymore. I can stop admitting, which allows me to go into this virtualization thing and this cloud thing head on. I can take my people, zero sum game. Who can hire five more people if they want to do a cloud project? Not the customers I talk to. They don't have the ability to hire more people, so they have to do a zero sum game figure out how to hire more people, without how to get to the cloud without hiring more people, right? And then the economics, right? So right now it's significantly less expensive to build your own private cloud than it is to put everything out in the public cloud. So we spend a lot of time with customers kind of walking through how you go from where you are to where you want to be, but we don't think it's going to stay that way. Does anybody remember how much it cost to get a 32-inch LCD about 15 years ago? About $15,000, right? The rich guys had one and I was like, man, I want that. And I had that 36-inch JVC, okay? But now you can get a 32-inch for, what, 300 bucks, 200 bucks at Costco. The price of the public cloud is going to fall. I don't know if it's going to fall that fast. It's going to fall. And you don't want to be locked in. You want to be able to flex. And that's the hybrid cloud architecture, right? So that's this is the value statement. So from here, I just want to hit a little bit about kind of the solution from a adoption. Very successful, right? Again, HP, Venus, by about five years, had 70% of the market. We've gone to 30% of the market, and a lot of it has come at their expense, okay? So we're global number two right now. North America, we have about 30% market share. So in terms of community, you know, you guys represent a community. This is that tipping point where we've actually now had the early adopters leaving company A, going to company B, and bringing Cisco in, bringing UCS in. We've got, we've got companies that are looking at three to five year projects and don't like the three to five year roadmap from our competition bringing us in. Okay, so we've done really well with the customers that bought in early and they're buying more and they're moving around that community to a nice big tipping point. So 30,000 customers on UCS, the companion product is the next portfolio and that's where we have um, about 60, about 40,000 about 40, customers on the next project. So the, uh, the, you know, I kind of call this like coverage. You know, when we started with UCS, we had like four little logos up here, and this is our ecosystem now. There's really no gaps, right? Building perspective or a reference, architecture perspective, great ecosystem, right? So, and then the roadmap's fantastic. So this is that graphic. Again, guys, I'm not going to walk through it here, but I did have uh, this image is a close-up of the back of the UCS system. So when you when you power this thing up and you turn it on, you hit the auto discover button, you acknowledge the chassis, and it'll acknowledge and create a 40 gig port channel left and a 40 gig port channel right. Just from this image, I have the option to do a 20 gig, 40 gig, or even an 80 gig port channel. That's active, active, one latency down to the blade. Okay, that is wickedly fast. The blade itself is capable of 20 gigs left and 20 gigs right. Tons of memory. So if it's an I.O. problem, i got tons of I.O. If it's a memory problem, i got tons of memory. Okay? Which means I can get tons and tons of VMs from any hypervisor, by the way, onto these UCS ports. So, Sid, you want to walk through this one a little bit? You're going to have to use the mic. I was told I was very Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Uh, so this uh, slide is very, uh, you know, very, very good to uh, bring to you. Um, which one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So is it available or is it? 
Uh, yeah, I used yeah, stuff that was pretty basic that I can share. You know, oh, okay. I, th this is all like I said, it's right out of that I that UC, UCF agility. A lot of what I'm talking about was just basic stuff. The the, the value statement things, I kind of made those slides up myself. Yeah. So, yeah. We can make that available for you. Though. A lot of that stuff here, um, you find a lot of documentation on our Shiko website. So, yeah. but we'll, we'll clean it yeah, up. Yeah, but those slides are very very so contract. How much? Time do you have? I mean, you can. I mean, we, we don't have any agenda for that. Just a line, so you can. Just all right. Whatever. I just want to make sure that you know. Yeah, tell us about the cat. I'm I'm standing. The the cat was? Yeah, well, yeah. The, 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 the lunch to get here yet? Cause yeah, I'm like, I'm standing, I'm standing in your way. You're like, I'm, I'm used to yeah, you guys hungry. Lunch right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, first of all, um, how many of you guys actually heard of our Nexus product line? Many of you guys. Okay, good. Um, have you guys actually heard of these yet? Okay, good. So, um, you know, going on what actually Drew said in terms of like the, the, the founders that actually founded Nova Systems, they came out with the Nexus product line first, right? So there's a lot of innovations that we pulled into the Nexus product line. One of the biggest things was uh, Unified I.O., which is basically being able to consolidate storage and I.O. into the same wire, right? And that's a 10 gig infrastructure. Right? So the UCS infrastructure basically is 10 gig. How we are able to be basically get um, the ability to drive that much I.O., but also storage I.O. with less modules in the back of the chassis is unified I.O., right? Which is essentially these components here, right? So you want to look at this as a as a backplane for your server architecture, right? So the one thing that we've actually done is when we came out with UCS, right, we understood we had zero market share, right, in the server, server business, right? That's, that's essentially Right, HP, Dell, and IBM with it. IBM with it coming. Right, so what we've actually did is we have the ability to actually take a different approach and how we design UCS, and we built it uh, from a fabric perspective. Right, HP, Dell, and IBM actually built it from a server perspective or a chassis perspective. So what does that actually really mean? Right, so when we built it into a fabric architecture, the, the, the compute architecture actually is now part of the networking fabric. Right. Our Cisco big card essentially that goes in the back of the chassis is actually a part of the fabric where you can instantiate multiple VNICs down to the B card and drive those QS policies from these, what I actually like to call as controllers, right? So these controllers are basically the, the place where you actually store all your parameters, all your identities for your compute, right? And push it down into a blade so the blade actually <coughs> starts to become a, 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 a stateless compute node and you could build identities for your specific applications from those fabric right? So these fabric interconnects, if you've seen an SS 5K before, they look like the 5K, they smell like the 5K, they feel like the 5K, right? Essentially, they use the same ASICs inside the 5K, so you could actually have 10 gigabit ethernet, ethernet, right? You have unified I.O. Which in terms of being able to do fiber channel, iSCSI, right? Um, but we've actually added some additional management components in here to be able to manage your, use, your whole entire UCS infrastructure, right? So, um, how many of you guys are actually familiar with fiber channel storage or any storage, EMC, NetApp, right? So, in that, in that architecture, there are always a set of controllers, right? And you basically log into the controllers and you basically manage all your LUNs, you carve out all your LUNs in, into that specific set of controllers. You want to scale capacity, you add a shelf, you plug it into the controller, the controllers actually identify the the the, the drives, whether they're staff or SATA drives, and actually adds it to, to, to the pool, right? Same concept with UCS, basically, we can add chassis to the fabric interconnect, it'll discover the compute, and it'll make those resources available, and you can push down service profiles to those to those plays. Right? Um, the benefit of that is you have one place to log in, which is the fabric interconnect, right? Uh, the fabric interconnect can support inside a single UCS domain 160 servers, right? So you could have a virtual chassis of 160 servers. You could push firmware upgrades and firmware updates to all 160 servers with less clicks, right? And you can actually upgrade all your blades inside that that that, that UCS domain with fewer steps, right? As a sysadmin, you know, I had I was I was managing a data center for a three-tier cloud provider, right? We had 300 or 400 servers, rack mount servers, being able to do a firmware upgrade to 400 was, couldn't meet in the four-hour four window, right? So 
the benefit of that was basically now I can basically drive up to 160 servers of firmware upgrades within 15 to 20 minutes, right? Which, which is really, really compelling in the sense where we could actually take back a lot of your time for you guys to actually do more innovative projects where you have to actually right? So these are the fabric, uh, these are the fabric um, interconnects. So these IO modules in the Nexus world is called the fabric extenders, right? So have you guys heard of the Nexus 2000? Right? So the Nexus 2000 basically will appear as a line card on the 5K and you manage everything from the 5K, right? So what we've actually done is we, we, we brought that same concept into the chassis, right? But we've actually also added intelligence to this to be able to discover all your components inside the chassis, right? So now that's how we actually drive 10 gig, 1 gig, right? Fiber channel management over a single one, right? And you can basically scale up to 20 chassis on the chassis. Right, and that could be blazed and right now. And the last components are basically so this is the back view, this is basically the front view, which is basically we have half width blades, right, uh, which are. You want to do that? You change it? Uh, yeah, you're moving on me, you're moving on me. So we have on the blade architecture, we have uh, half width blades and full width blades, right? We have Ivy IV Bridge, which are basically the newer processors that Intel has out, right? But we also have the Sandy Bridge architecture, which is current today, right? So we have two of those compute platforms, but we also have rag mount servers that can actually integrate into the into the management paradigm. So you can have a mix of blade and rag mount all under a single management domain, right? And which is basically going to be called your virtual chassis. That all makes sense. Any questions, comments, rumors? Didn't you guys just recently come out with some new blades, the uh, four series or something? The uh, blades in terms of service? Yes. Yeah, so we have uh, the four series. I think you might probably be thinking about our, our four socket servers. Yeah. Right, so we have a blade form factor, which is uh, the V420, right, and a C400 series, which is our basically our four socket. Right, and those are basically our Ivy Bridge, right, um, for for general compute purposes, right. But then we also have Intel Xeon 7500 processors, more for like database intensive uh, processes, right. So we have a four socket solution. We also have a, a two socket. We have a lot, you know, in, in, in essentially, right. Well, we since since the, since the chassis are very very stateless, we have a lot of innovation coming um, from, on the UCS platform over the next year, and you will actually start seeing that. Um, I can't talk about it right now because like it's still you know still being worked out in the BU. But what we can actually do in the back of that chassis, since it's stateless, we can actually replace those modules and insert another module. We could go 40 gig. We could go. We could put a 100 gig module. We could we could do things like PCIe switching. We could do things like you know uh, make that into a storage control if we wanted to. Right? Because those there's really no state in that chassis, and that's one of the fundamental uh, innovations that we've actually done. You mentioned about a PCIe switch. What can we do too with the? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, did that PCIe switching? PCIe switch is just mentioned, right? PCIe switch. Mm -hmm. So how will you do with the PCIe switch? Uh, so, wow. Uh, so basically, you know, um, so for the PCIe switching, right? Um, they, uh, a good use case for that is that if I have a, if I have a twenty chassis architecture. Right under a pair of fabric interconnects, right? Okay. I could essentially dedicate an entire chassis where a chassis basically can house eight half width blades or four full width blades, right? I could dedicate an entire chassis just for GPUs, right? And 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 one server down here that needs GPUs that have PCI switching, I could virtualize that GPU and I could actually say, you know what, this server here requires GPU resources. For PCI switching, I don't really need to put it in these servers anymore. I could just utilize the GPUs there, right? Second thing is I don't really need to put a a a, a NIC card in the back of the of the blade because it's PCI switching already. So I could essentially say, hey, look, you know, I could dedicate an entire rack for GPUs. I could allocate power to that, right? Because GPUs are really power hungry, right? I could entire I could allocate an entire rack to just GPUs. And all my other servers under that single fabric interconnect have actually carved out the GPU resources in that rack. So you save power 
and, and cooling because you don't need a big car, you don't need any kind of car in, a, in another rack, so you could lower your power for friends and instead of getting that recently allocated. Speaking of cooling, yeah. what is the thermal load of these two configurations? Is it the same? Data centers I walk in <coughs> have to have too many blank spots in order to allow the airflow to go right. through. That's, that's, that's actually a good question. Um, so what we've actually done is that bring it to the to the slide back bring it back to that slide that has the, the nice cable and um, so the power cooling, right? So we've been very efficient with the power and cooling, right? Um, so if you look at the back of the chassis, since we only require two modules. Right? Um, in a traditional legacy um, architecture like HP or Dell, you have to have a module for Ethernet, a module for fiber channel, and then a module, a module for, uh, for, for management, right? And if you want to add more connectivity to a blade, you have to add another module for Ethernet, add another module for fiber channel, right? So we can do all this in a single IO module. So we've actually architected the, the chances to be 63% more open, right? Um, these are actual holes, and if you look in the front of the, of the servers, the server um, bezels actually have holes, so it pulls the air through the chassis, and it cools it a lot more efficiently. So you don't really need to allow spacing in your chassis, you know, between your chassis anymore, because you could cool it a lot more efficiently. There's, there's right. also a, uh, so there's, so the, the, the architecture's got a lot of airflow, okay? Uh, so really good. The, the fans start at 30%. And it just has a little regulator to the thermal of the blades. It won't ramp up the fan speed until the thermal yeah. kicks off enough heat. So it's kind of yeah. dynamically doing that every 20 to 30 seconds, sampling the heat. So it keeps that down instead of up. Right. Defaulted down. Third is that uh, the less cables, less parts, less power concept. We also have a power capping policy in the system. Uh, just like you do QoS, where you can carve up the pipe, we can carve up the power. I can put a power, pa power capping policy on blades or chassis, so in the event that I'm about to hit the circuit limit, I can have the power capping policy turn on and say, well, throttle all these blades down, but keep these four on because they're my database blades. And that policy is something I define on the day I set up the system. If I want to define a power capping policy, I just set up a power, power capping policy. Okay. So in aggregate, we don't really brag about power savings because everybody's close. But if you have to play power games, we have some really cool ways to play power games yeah. with the system. Yeah. And you know the, the the physical architecture you know alone is you know can can cool it um, more efficiently than what what traditional server architectures where they have to take a path into one server, go up, and then squeeze through a tiny hole in the back of the chassis because the IO modules block it. But then you also see cabling that impede airflow, right? Um, this you know, really opens it up uh, to, to be able to control it. Does that, does that help? So just for, uh, just for for time purposes, I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that from a management perspective, the, the, the software comes with this. When you buy UCS, you get UCS Manager. It doesn't install somewhere else. It installs on the fabric, on an ASIC in the fabric. It does everything, okay? So we do demos. If you ever sit down with Cisco, we'll, we talk about stateless computing, and when we talk about it, you can't whiteboard it. Like it's stateless computing, right? Okay, but it's, it's a it's a service profile. It's got all these settings, and then I can, you know, apply the service profile, and I can move it around. It's like it's great. It's great. Okay, well, we log in, and I actually do a demo, right, of UCS Manager. That's the best way to do it. So if you're interested in getting a UCS demo, you know, contact your Cisco account team, and they can definitely walk you through that. And I just wanted to kind of say. These bundles out there make it pretty easy. These are the blade bundles. These are the rack server bundles. Um, you know, and this is that that path, right? So when we put it all together, like we're either trying to help you get to this midpoint, or we're trying to help you get out to the finish line. So it's kind of like two parts of the journey: get to this converge, and then start looking at how you're going to do some sort of a private cloud hybrid cloud architecture. And then uh, with that, I just want to say thank you and have a great uh, meetup.